Welcome to the Diane McClay Show, empowering life through choice. Get ready to discover new perspectives, motivation, and balance through Diane's compassionate storytelling and insightful discussions. Whether you're feeling stuck and discouraged or curious and looking for more possibilities, Diane has your back and she's ready to take you on a journey of self-discovery and expansion. Choice is powerful and so are you. The Diane McClay Show starts now. Welcome in, everybody, to another show where we're here to empower you by empowering your choice. I'm Diane McClay, your host. My guest today was raised in a small western Pennsylvania coal mining town, born and raised there. His family worked in the coal mines, and he dreamed of going way above the ground, keeping himself above ground. In spite of having self-doubt and crushing feelings of not having a clear sense of direction, he made the choice to go all out and reach his childhood dream of becoming a pilot. Pilot. He's been a fighter pilot for in, with F-16s. He's worked for Southwest Airlines, and he's also uh, created this fantastic program called Just Two Choices that we're going to talk about today. Please help me welcome Rico Rakoski from Boulder, Colorado. Hi, Diane. Hey. Hi, Thanks for thanks for joining the show. Uh, you Thank and I you. connected. You know, uh, behind me, I have two words. Uh, one is courage, and one is choice. And when I first met you, we had this insane, vibrant, energizing conversation about our beliefs in choice, what's led us to coach and speak about the co- the topic of choice. So, uh, give our listeners a little bit of how did you go from coal miner to air pi- airplane pilot to author and then creating this Just Two Choices program. Uh, What led you here and and why are you doing this work today? You know, that's fascinating you ask the question that way. It's, um, you know, it really goes back to um, the origins actually go back to high school of all things. I mean, I got, I got, you know, I got called into the guidance office one day, you know, the typical guidance office stuff goes, you know, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? We've got 15 minutes to plan this out, you know? And <laughs> I said, man, I, I said, I, oh, I, I'd like to be a, I'd like to be a pilot for the military. I like art. And, um, but overall I said, I'd like to be a pilot for the military. And she looked over my grades and, you know, and there's <laughs> nothing, there's no spin on this. It's just, you know, you can all picture being in the room, you know, and she looks over my grades and she goes, man, you're, you're not going to get into military pilot school. She says, you need to go to junior college. And, you know, if there was a video of me, I probably was nodding my head up and down, you know, out of respect, but deep inside, I'm going, that doesn't sound right. You know? And as I remember walking down the hall though, I, uh, I kind of saw and I mean, it's in real, I mean, it's like, I saw two paths. One was my path that went off to flying. And the other one was, was what, you know, her path respectfully, what she thought I should be doing. And I said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to try anyway. And nice. advancing the story, um, it took three tries to get into military pilot school. So in some ways she was right. I didn't get in the first time. I got in the third time I applied. And so, you know, one day I was, um, I'd been invited to speak, not, not actually to speak. I invited to a high school as a guest to talk to some students about aviation because now I was <laughs> now I was living my dream. I was flying F-16s and in the military and and uh, they asked me to come talk to the kids. And that's when the light kind of turned on for me initially, because it took a while to grow the whole just two choices idea. Right. But I, you know, what would have happened if I'd have gone down that other path where I didn't, as scared as I was, you know, uh, I shouldn't say is uncertain as I was, not necessarily scared, but uncertain when, you know, uh, an authority figure can tell you this is what they believe from looking at what, you know, your grades and stuff are. Um, So as uncertain as I was about stepping into something like aviation at the level I wanted to step into it, uh, it was just, it just came down to that, you know, came down to just two choices really. And that's where the idea originally started flowing. And then the more and more I started to, uh, to interact with kids, I did a lot of uh, programs for kids. I developed things that, that were based on this idea of their, 
there are just two choices. And so it, it took it took several years for this whole thing to evolve, but its roots, its origin go, really goes back to that one moment in high school that I'll never forget. You know, it, that doesn't, I remember, but I do remember this. I do remember saying to myself, that doesn't sound right. Well, I want to call that, that's a good segue. I want to call that out because in the first couple of minutes of our show, you said something that's really important and I think is a good tool for our audience. In high school, when you're supposed to listen to an authority figure and really everybody thinks you don't know anything at all, that's a similar concept that actually translates later in life. We have bosses, we have parents, we have church leaders, we have you know family members, we have society, we have our community that expects things of us. And what I really wanna call out here, and I think it's critical to the foundation of our conversation, is you had something in your gut that didn't feel right. So that's the first place I want to start the conversation with our audience members is if you're not sure about something and you have to make a choice between one thing or the other, you know, do I do it this way? Do I do it that way? Spend that much money, not spend that too much money. Really, I think the first place is let's pause for a minute, slow down and just ask our gut, like, does this feel right to me? And you're either going to get a yes or a no. I mean, it's going to be a uh-huh. Yes, it is, or uh, uh no, it's not. Do you agree with that? Yes, I, I agree with you. Yeah, well said, very, very well stated. And I, you know, sometimes there are some places where it feels like there's some gray areas, but I think you also agree that the more we spend time hitting a tennis ball back and forth between should I or shouldn't I, should I or shouldn't I, with the net being the definitive line, you know, the, the more I tell myself to go back to my original gut feel. Right. One That's, of the things that I go into that, when I go back to my gut feeling, if I make a decision based on my gut feeling, I'm going to know pretty quickly of whether that decision moves me forward or whether it doesn't. I'm going to go, oh, whoa, I missed something in that step. But I can go back to that place before I made the decision and I can redecide again. Most times, I mean, short of like plunking millions of dollars down for a house or not millions, but, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, feels like millions these days, but short of like signing that last document that commits you to a large amount of money or, or, or a large uh, long-term, long-time commitment, what I've found is there's typically places along the decision-making path that allow you to stop and pause and pivot in real time and pivot uh, with some new information. And one of the things I believe in is that one choice sometimes is just there to inform the very next choice. Right. right? Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, you know, let's just use the bricks behind me. You know, they're all, it's, they're, they're bricks. Every, every one of those choices is a brick in the fireplace. It's a brick in the building. It's a brick in, you know, it's, it's a brick in life. And uh, it, it does, it leads, you can't, you, you can't, I guess, I guess the best way to maybe describe it, I hadn't thought of it this way is you can't skip a choice. You know, a, a small choice is still an incremental part of what becomes a larger choice. Right. Um, and that's a good lead into, um, we had a conversation about binary thinking, but before we do that, um, one of the components of my program is really choosing to bring nature into our life. Uh, I feel like nature can teach us things. It gives us the opportunity to see things from a different perspective. So Jacob, if you'd roll a couple of those pictures. Um, when we talk about choice, uh, nature often gives us choice. Uh, and it, the first picture uh, for people who can't see it is a picture of a bee. And my story is, is, you know, when you see a bee, do you instantly feel like, oh, that's threatening. I need to get it away from me. I need to swat it, kill it. Or do you stop for a minute? Do you choose to say, wow, that's fascinating. I get to watch that for a couple of minutes and see what it does. Right. So to choice to me, when you can bring choice into your personal life and then you can look at how nature chooses things, um, bees choose flowers for a specific reason. And if there's not good pollen, they move on to the next flower. The next picture is a bunch of bunny rabbits in my garden. And so the question to the audience is, when you see a bunch of baby rabbits, do you think, oh no, those are pests and they're gonna eat my garden and I have to get rid of them? Or do you plant some things around them and allow them to grow and occupy that space temporarily just to be able to observe them and feel joy and feel happiness? And I chose the latter with both of those, uh, both of those things. So yeah. let's, let's, let's parlay that into 
uh, where do you find choice shows up in your life, especially in the piloting world, the coaching world, the teaching world, and how can our audience look for places that they can start making choices that move them forward? Well, actually, you know, I, I this is one of the techniques I use. Actually, there's three techniques I use I, every day. And um, this relates, at first, I, I relate it to, I'll relate it to overwhelm in general is when it pops up. However, it applies to everything, which is if we get used to using the phrase, I choose to, you know, I choose to be on this wonderful transformation talk radio, you know, on your show, you know, I, I choose to, um, at, let's just say I choose to, to drink coffee this morning. We start to incorporate this idea, just this phrase, I choose to, I choose to. Uh, to me, that's the fastest way to bring our awareness to the fact that what's happening in our life isn't a default situation. It really is, a, you know, it really is our choice of how and what direction we choose to have our energy flow to create with. And so the three go-to phrases that I use, and I hope this applies to the way you asked the question, is I, I choose to, to remind myself, I choose to tell my new story, which is usually we start to pay attention. We will hear, hear more about our choices when we have difficulties. You know, so I choose to. Well, I choose to stay in overwhelm. I choose to stay frustrated. I choose to feel uncertain. Or the next one is, which leads to the natural one, which is okay. I know where I am. Overwhelmed, frustration, uncertain. Then I choose to tell my new story. So now I take that same phrase and I add to tell my new story. So I choose to tell my new story. My new story of, of I know there's a solution here instead of overwhelm. You know, I know there's, I'm, I'm, I choose to look for the solution. I choose to, I choose to look for the peace of mind. I choose to, um, to look for the way that I'm going to respond that's going to get get me to be uplifted. And I know it sounds corny. And I say it sounds corny to myself almost every single time. Going, Rico, this is corny. It's just, I do know, which is the third phrase, there are just two choices. So the longer I stay, so I can hit myself between, just punch myself or knock, bump, bump myself in the head here and hit myself between the eyes and say, dude, you know the answer, it's just two choices. So the, the other ones are smoother lead-ins to the fact that there are just two choices. And so that's how I, that's how I navigate basically everything, you know, from watching what I'm eating or, uh, you know, the cho choice of the hot fudge Sunday or whatever, it comes right. down to those things. I don't know well, if that and, and I want to come, I'm going to come back to the question of what do you say to people who say, I don't, I don't feel like I have a choice, but I, I want to relay something. Um, for me, I think a lot of people and a lot of my clients, I feel like they get artificially stuck in the, in um, society's binary way of thinking. Uh, I feel like people are pressured to make the right choice. They feel uh, they almost are paralyzed because yeah. they want to make the right choice, but feel like they can't, or they're fearful of making the wrong choice. And my question to our audience and to you and, and to our producer and everybody else is, what if you're just making a choice? What if we choose to get rid of right or wrong, good or bad, and we just say, today, I'm going to make a choice with the information I have, with the time I have, with the resources that are available to me right now, I'm going to make a choice and then wait to see how we, if we get more information, if our body feels better or feels worse by making that choice. If we right. just get rid of the binary thinking that something is right or wrong or good or bad, I think we're already ahead. And then reframe the binary as, and we'll talk about this. I want you to speak to your side of it. But if we reframe it to, does this choice make me feel good or not? Does it move me forward or not? Does it make me happy or not? Does it align with my values or not? So mm -hmm. can you speak to that a little bit and, uh, and give me some feedback on if you think we're, we're in the right ballpark here? Yeah, you know, um, thank you. I mean, that's those. Those are some great thoughts, and and um, I think at this point, what I'll do is I'll just I'll just put this diagram up with the just two choices diagram here. Okay, and for our listeners who can't actually see it, yeah. there's a circle on a page, and it's basically a starting point with a choice. 
and there is an arrow with a number one going up towards like one o'clock on the on the clock, and then another arrow of a different color going down towards five or six o'clock, right? So let's speak to that, Rico. And, and the way and the way that if you and for listeners who you know for the listeners, just take um, you know make a peace sign, and then turn it sideways, you know, and and your index finger is going to point up in the choice one direction. And your middle finger is pointing down, and that's the choice two direction. And the reason I say choice one and choice two is choice one is, is to me, is always the upward in, in aviation would be the upward vector, you know, the, the upward direction that you want to take your life. And, and uh, choice one, your index finger, again, represents to me, not necessarily right, it represents new and better. Nice. And, and so the, the other represents the index finger pointing or the, the middle finger pointing down represents what I consider to be the same old choice. So if I'm making a choice that's, you know, when I, when I go to sort through, through things, I look at it from the point of view of remembering that choice one, what's a new and better choice that I can make in this situation? Let's take your B example. You know, if you are fearful, if a person is fearful of, of, the, of, of a B, that would be the same old choice, which would be the index finger direction. So think about what would be, how about my making a new and better choice? Notice the difference in the vibration between new and better and right or wrong. Exactly. New and, new and better choice or same old, uh, and, and same old choice is more of a, um, a living in the present moment kind of thing. Right or wrong is much more of a judgment, obviously. And, and it's, it's just languaging that is, it's been around forever. And I, you know, fortunately with yourself and your show and, you know, what we're doing here is just two choices, you know, we're, we're getting people to look at choice um, in a completely new, a completely new way. So, so again, um, the vibrational difference between new and better and same old choices to me is a lot more approachable than it is to say right or wrong in the binary, like you said, well, you know, in the binary method of doing things. So, so new and better choice. I'll observe the bee. I'll give it a two. I'll, I'm going to give it a couple of minutes. I'm just going to observe it. Oh, it flew off. It didn't sting me. It's not after me. Right. So, you, know. Well, you know, and in that moment, like, let's just assume somebody has had a bad experience with bees. So even they can say, I can choose to react in panic and, and um, anxiety, or I can step five feet away from wherever that bee is. And I can choose to breathe and realize that I'm safe, right? And I, I realize that there's some things that happen at the back end of the dinosaur brain about keeping ourselves safe that, that a lot of people may not be able to get in touch with right away. But I feel like the process we're describing is a way to sort of re, start retooling the brain and, and really letting, uh, the, letting our conscious mind start to connect to the unconscious mind through choice. Would, would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And, and you know, I. A piece of history here. Um, I think we talked about this the first time we we chatted. You know, a piece of history is um, we're all familiar. You know, most people who are in this space are very familiar with Napoleon Hill and Norman, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, you know, power of positive thinking, and and Dale Carnegie. I mean, they all got started in the early '30s with their own radio shows, of course, and and uh, and they they started the movement that we are still in today. The movement, in my point of view, or my viewpoint, is the take action movement. Take take you know, take positive action, take massive action movement. I think we're we have moved into a whole new space. I think we're in the choice space now. Humanity, I believe, has been educated um, so, uh, where the idea of take positive action, take action, massive action, 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 action is now an acceptable term, an acceptable idea. Now we take it down one more, like coming down a funnel. Now we take it down, you know, down the funnel a little bit further, which is every action before it's taken is a choice. And so now we start to own the choice aspect of energizing the action, you know, in a particular way. And if I can add one thing, of you know, course. It's, it's so revolutionary. I was reading about Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. It was so revolutionary back in 1952, I believe, when he wrote the book, The Power of Positive Thinking. He had a, um, he had a business partner who was a psychiatrist, psychologist, 
and his his business partner actually chose to um, step back away from him, saying, "Man, you're going to mess up a lot of people's lives by giving them the impression that they can make, they can take it." they can think positive on their own without going to professional counseling. And this is not a, a statement to professional counselors. This is just th this whole thought, the space we're in now was so revolutionary back then that it, it flipped, it flipped things upside down. And uh, in New York city in particular, you can imagine the chat that went on in New York city, you know, around this subject. And so that's where I think we're moving to in this space here with choice is now we're just, taking it to the next to the next level so yeah i this is this is fascinating i mean every time i talk to you i just get lit up and all sorts of ideas are awesome. popping into my head like i'm i'm it's so exciting to me to to find another professional in the field of choice you know when i put these words on my wall they came about because i i came to a pivotal point in my dream career uh where i had made some mistakes as a manager um and they it, they offered me a position somewhere else, six hours away from my family. And, and I had to say to myself, am I doing what they want me to do? Or, or do I need to do what I want to do that makes me happy? And, that, and choice came on my wall. That was a light switch for me when I realized that I didn't have to follow someone else's path or vision for me, even though people expected it. And as soon as I said, no, thank you, I'm going to do my thing my way, um, there was this enormous explosion of power in, in my chest, my heart, my lungs, my diaphragm, and it's become my, um, my focus. I feel like I'm called to help people bring choice in the world. So I'm super excited when you start bringing the history of it and how positive thinking has evolved and it's now an acceptable place for us to be. So take our listeners through, um, what are some, what are some Ricoisms? What are some things they need to know in the next few minutes before, uh, we run out of time? Well, again, I, I'm going to reemphasize that the quickest go-to is to say, I choose to. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, frustrated, stuck, uncertain, is, is stop it. You stop it right there. So you don't resist it by saying, hey, stop, stop, stop. I got to quit thinking this way because that's a choice too. Right. So the, the, the way to get over the hump on all of these things, I think, is for, for everything in life, for me, because everything's a choice. Is, is to say, I choose to. Oh, I choose to be frustrated. I choose to be overwhelmed. You, I, I mean, I wake up in the morning sometimes and probably like yourself and you just, just go, oh, there's so much to do. How am I going to possibly get all this done? And so that's where I, I say the I choose to phrase reminds me that I'm the one who's directing the energy either into a new and better story, a new and better way, which is number two. I right. choose to tell a new story. And a new story just is a simple way of reminding yourself to do something differently. That's all, you know, because life's a story. And so those, those, are, those are my three things. You know, I choose to, I choose to tell my new story. And then what is that, my, what is that new story about how my day is going to look? How's my day going to look being one of peace of mind and confidence? Well, I'll start with a small win. Right. And then, then the just two choices, just a, all right, let's just do it. Quit crying about it, you know. <laughs> I mean, let's get to it. You know, um, you you had a little teaser in uh, some questions that we were talking about beforehand, and you you mentioned that you've done a choice survey with over forty celebrities, uh, Robert Kioski. Um, uh, I think you talked to uh, Dallas Cowboys uh, MVP Roger Staubach. Yeah, Roger and, Staubach. Right. So you had a couple people, but um, the one that really drew me in the most was Rudy, uh, the guy who plays Rudy Rudiger, who was the football star for um, uh, Notre Dame. It was a great movie. Can you briefly uh, tease us with a little bit of what their answers were? And we've got about three minutes left, so I want to make sure we plug your book, too. But um, can you speak to that a little bit about your choice survey and what uh, famous people and, and really good people at their jobs uh, told you about choice? Sure. I, well, thank you. I had a, I had a, I'll compress it. I had a Just Two Choices radio show, and the whole reason behind the show is to be able to ask the question, and I'll ask the listener. In fact, I'll ask you. Your, I know what your answer is going to be, but what in the survey? It was I gave the survey in the last five minutes of the show. It was a thirty-minute show, where I asked the celebrities um, like Roger Staubach and Rudy Rudiger, Robert Kiyosaki, and all kinds of Olympians, and you know, and 
stars in the NBA and women's NBA and all that stuff. I asked them all, you know, what percentage of life is choice? What percentage of life is circumstance? And the average right now is 83.6% says it's choice. And, um, you know, the other 16.7 says it's circumstance. But my point being, Roger Staubach thought that the answer was 40, 60, 40 yep. percent choice, 60 percent circumstance, which really kind of threw my threw me and the other guy I was doing the show with. It was like, wow. So my point being, when I asked Rudy Rutger, he gave the best answer to keep this short. He says, considering that your um, your circumstances are where you are right now, listening to this show, you know, uh, you got here because of a choice. <clears throat> and the next thing you're going to do is going to be because of a choice. So it has to be, life has to be 100% choice. It, it's not, the circumstances are just the circumstances. The circumstances exist because of the choices you, that you've made or somehow, you know, the, the choices you've made have gotten you along there. So that was the big lesson out of it. It's still over 80%. But my, my point being that also, if it, life is 80% choice, I think we can all amp up our lives a lot better um, to make those new and better choices. I choose to amp up my life. Yeah, uh, yeah. You You're know, we may not be able to choose what happens to us, right? But my belief is that we can choose how we respond, how we react. We get to choose if and how we want it to define us, and we get to choose the lessons that we teach from it. And I would love to have you come back on the show again so we can talk more about the lessons we've learned in our lives about choice. But before we let you go, I've got your book here. Uh, people can find your book, Just Two Choices. It is your life. And you've got these in Kindle version on Amazon. People can also go to justtwochoices.com. Uh, how can people, how do you want people to connect with you uh, if they're more curious about what you do as a coach or as a speaker and uh, if they want to talk to you more about choice in their life? Well, that's very kind of you. I really appreciate it. And if, if they just go Rico at justtwochoices.com, that'll, that'll get right to me. And we also have a free download uh, that's to, that teaches just, just two choices kind of things. It's uh, just two choices.com forward slash live. So not live, but live uh, right. interview kind of thing. Right. And you'll be able to download that just two choices diagram. And, and, and kind of there's a lot, I've been to your website. There's a lot of good stuff there. There's a lot of good thought provoking articles. There's links to other interviews you've done with other people and blogs you've written. Uh, so Rico, you had one last thing. You Were you looking for something that you were going to share on the show before, uh, before we, jumped online with Jacob you well you, I, pulled, you thought of something in the last minute and I don't want to forget that oh it, it just you know a lot of this the source of just two choices is in aviation this is called and of all things it's it's literally called it's a miniature earth in the cockpit but it's a visual and it's a visual of the earth and you can fly around the world never seeing the ground safely all because of this one instrument and there are just two choices either and and this you're either is, going up or you're going down is that right yeah, you're either going up or you're going down. And, and the point is, though, that it's visual. The just two choices idea is an image to put in your mind, either through this, the two fingers, or through, as you will see on the website, the just two choices diagram. So we're taking choice from C-H-O-I-C-E, a word among thousands of words in a document, to, to a visual, which teaches 60,000 times faster. Nice. I like it. I like it. Rico, uh, thank you for being my guest today. Will you come back? Can we have another conversation about choice and other steps and tips to help people uh, get out of that stressful state? I, I'd be absolutely honored. Awesome. And thank you so much. You're so kind. And and everybody else, and God bless you all and, and uh, keep making those new and better choices. Exactly. Well, thank you again for being here. I'm Diane McClay, your host with the Diane McClay Show. And as always, we're going to sign off with Empower Your Life and Engage Your Choice. Thank you for listening to The Diane McClay Show, where you are empowered to enact change in your life through choice. You know that little voice in your head that's been telling you to pursue that passion project? Or maybe it's been screaming for you to go outside and explore the great outdoors. That voice is you, and you deserve to be heard. Listen, make a choice, make a change, and watch yourself grow. For more information about Diane or to work with her personally, visit dianemcclay.com.